4.3, number 33, it says find the absolute extreme of F and where they occur, find any inflection points, sketch a possible graph of F. Okay, so I'm going to start by making a, a graph of F and then um, based off of the graph we should be able to answer the questions a little easier. Alright, so... First thing it says, uh, when x is 0, f is 0, okay? When x is 1, f is 2. When x is 2, f is 0. When x is 3, f is negative 2. Okay, we know that's the case. So now, um, we've got four points graphed. Stretching this neck out as far as it goes here. So now when x is 0, the derivative is 3. So we have a slope of 3 right here. Kind of think of it like that. Um, when x is 1, the slope is 0. So it's going to be flat at that point. When x is 2, the derivative doesn't exist. So maybe a cusp or a corner or a vertical, something happens where the derivative doesn't exist there. When x is 3, the derivative is negative 3. So 1, 2, 3, the derivative is negative 3. So think of it as it's going to have a slope of negative 3 at that point. So now when x is 0, the second derivative is 0. So there's no concavity at 0. When x is 1, when x is 1, the second derivative is negative 1. So that means just that it's concave down at 1. So if it's flat and it's concave down, we know that it's going to have like a maximum like that. Um, at 2, the second derivative doesn't exist, which makes sense. The first derivative doesn't exist. Um, at 3, the second derivative is 0, so there's no concavity at 3. Okay, well, we don't know anything about the graph beyond 3, so these 0 and 3 are kind of the starting and ending points of the function. So that's all I can do based off the first one. Uh, let's look at the second chart. It says, between 0 and 1, our function is positive. It's always above the x-axis. So between 0 and 1, yeah, it's above the x-axis. That would make sense. It never goes down below it. Uh, between 1 and 2, it's also positive. So it remains from 0 to 2, it's always going to be above the x-axis. Then from 2 to 3, it's always going to be below the x-axis. So above and then below. Between 0 and 1, our slope is always positive. Our derivative is positive. So it's going to increase from 0 to 1. Okay, so it's just going to go up and increase the whole time. It's going to decrease from 1 to 2 and decrease from 2 to 3. So it's going to increase, decrease, decrease. And the last clues are concavity. Between 0 and 1 it's concave down. Between 1 and 2 it's concave down. Between 2 and 3 it's concave down. So the only way this works is now we need to decrease the derivative can't exist there, so we have to create a corner or a cusp. It has to decrease and it has to remain concave down. So something like that would meet all the criteria. It wouldn't be a bad idea to go back and double check everything, but that should work.